Hi, uh, Caddy here, and it's the 9-11 edition of Caddy's Corner. I'm going to cover a few things today. Um, I have to work at Montero's tonight, and uh, made sure to do a lot of self-care today. And while I was working out today, I earned another dinosaur sticker. I uh, heard a song, it's in my gym playlist, called uh, We Live by Super Chick. And I thought I'd start off with sharing the chorus of that. Um, we live, we love, we forgive and never give up. Cause the days that we're given are gifts from above. Today we will remember to live and to love. That's not really the melody, but you get the gist. Um, anniversaries like this are very hard. Unfortunately, the older we get, the more of them we have. Uh, this one, in particular, the world shares. There have been many in history that the world also shared. So, um, that said a couple things I want to talk about. Um, so, I am fortunate in the fact that I only personally am aware of one person who I lost that day in the attacks. He was the chief engineer of the Trade Center. His name was Charlie McGee. I worked with him at Manhattan Mall previously. Um, and he was lost that day. But the story of Charlie isn't really very widely known, and I'd like to share it with you real quick. Uh, the first time I went to the 9-11 memorial with Miss uh, Stephanie Cox Connolly, I, I took a laminated version and left it there so other people would know what that one name meant even if it was just for one day, they only left it there. Anyway, I'm gonna read it now, so. Um, he wasn't a first responder, but he responded first. He was a chief engineer for the World Trade Center and a 28 year member of Local 94. He was on the 88th floor in the management office when the first plane hit. He was with his coworker, John Griffin Jr. And, um, he called his wife and said he was okay and then he said i have to go help people and there's many stories of him getting everyone off every single floor and down to the lobby and out of that building and word has it that he met with the firemen there and assisted them back up into the building and was never heard from again so blessings to charlie mcgee to all of your family and friends. Um, I think of you many days, but always especially today. So I was here in New York that day. I'm not gonna get into the details of what I went through, but afterwards um, I was in a band with AJ Cope and Stephanie Cox Conley. And we, we're working on our album and sort of went furiously into it. And um, uh, we were down in a basement. Uh, this guy, Spencer, who was in, working on being an engineer, had set up this little uh, studio in his basement, Cobwell Web Filled in Brooklyn. I don't remember what neighborhood. And so we were down there working sort of um, with a lot of manic energy because we, nobody knew what to do with themselves right after this happened. And um, at the time, AJ was bartending at the Raccoon Lodge downtown. And this is very close to the site. And so she was dealing with first responders and a lot of construction guys. And uh, it was a, I don't even know everything that she went through. But one thing she shared with us was that one day, um, two guys started to get into it and fast. And it was getting ready to be a, a knockdown, drag out, bloody brawl. And one older guy in the bar didn't say a word, cut it out, you guys, or anything. He just started singing, You Are My Sunshine. So she does a rendition of it um, uh, with her guitar on the album that we had, uh, which by the way is on Touch Tunes. If you want to get her to earn uh, 33 cents next month, play it at your local bub. Um, but we all got together and did a recreation of that drunken bar. Oh, so he started singing and then the entire bar started singing and it stopped the fight. That's the point of the story. Um, so we recorded a version of that, which actually I want to play for you now. So hang on. Feel free to sing along.
So we do the best we can in these days, people. Today, I'm gonna be at Montero's. Right around the corner on Hick Street is the 224 Firehouse. And these guys have become my brothers. And they were the ones that answered the call for Adam last year. We've been through a lot together. And my first year at Montero's, I didn't realize it would be a special day at that bar because of the firehouse. So maybe some of them will come in today, maybe not, but most people in New York are having a rough day today. So I've put on my rock and roll warrior outfit and got my hair all fluffy and shiny and I'm gonna just try to be there for them in the way uh, usually referred to Irish wake style when you go to a bar after a funeral. Um, and it's as important for me to be there and be a part of it as for them. Um, they're the closest firehouse. Yeah, they're in Brooklyn, but they were the closest firehouse in Brooklyn, obviously. They were decimated and devastated 18 years ago. So, you don't have to be here to experience the trauma of what we went through that day. It doesn't matter where you live or where you're watching this from or where you were that day, it does not matter. Um, hashtag hope. My name is Catherine Hope Feast and with me, there is always hope around. I have survived a lot in my life to get to where I am today and that is the message that I wish to spread forward. And I'm not saying that as some esoteric website only winterwebs hashtag business plan for the future. Um, I actually every day wake up and try to spread hope in any way that I can, as far as I can. So my hope for today is that you'll pick up the baton and spread some hope too. That's it. See you tomorrow.